This is the 8th Magic Vista equipped with the latest Intel N150 and it's very capable for a lot of things. You can check my full review and also the super cut version. And this thing here is the Tox 3 player, guys. Now, this is my main choice for an HTPC. It's not technically a PC, it's a box with Amlogic SLC running core like on Linux that allows me to kind of scrape my local library and watch my favorite movies, shows, and etc. So we can just see like this thing is that big and this thing is almost that size, but this thing can run Windows 11. And there's something very important in terms of a difference between this and this device when you connect them to a TV. And yeah, this thing is actually in my pocket. This is my TV's remote, guys. I use my TV remote to control the Tox 3 player and this is very important when you're like 4 meters away on your couch, you want to enjoy your favorite, whatever things are favorite, and yeah you need something to control the player. But why am I making this video? Because apparently this thing here cannot control this. And it's not only that the Ace Magic mini PC is like this, a lot of the mini PCs out there just don't have something here on the back that is called the HDMI CEC or Consumer Electronic Control. And this is very important because it's a standard built-in that allows devices to communicate. So let's say that you hook this up your receiver, which is in my case a Denon receiver, and then hook up the receiver to your TV. Like all these devices support the CEC to allow you to use this thing here, the remote, to just go down to the next movie or listen to the next tune or just powering off and on. And of course also volumes control. Now why can't I use the remote on the Vista Mini PC. And it's a problem for a lot of the Mini PCs out there because a lot of those Mini PCs run some kind of desktop environment. It could be Windows, could be anything based on Linux, anything else. And the thing is that, yeah, a lot of the manufacturers don't see the need to implement the CEC HDMI standard here because they expect this device to be connected to a proper keyboard and a mouse and, of course, a monitor. Unlike the very cheap and popular media players that are based on Android and all kind of other forks, this one running on M-Logic kind of expects you to hook up this thing to a proper TV and then, of course, yeah, use the remote. So the goal of this video is to show you how you can still turn your Windows mini PC or whatever desktop you're using into an HTPC that is a home tier PC and also try to somehow control it but also in the same time don't lose that sweet desktop environment and yeah I'm gonna show you how to do this guys and it's not that I didn't try really remote so I have this one here doesn't really work infrared and this one here and maybe I have one, yeah, this one here as well. The thing is, there are options for sure. You can go and buy the Pulse HDMI CEC adapter that you hook up there, but it's going to set you off at like 40, 50 bucks, or you can buy a proper Bluetooth remote. The thing is, and that annoys me, it's not built in. So we have to find a workaround. It's not a 100% solution, guys, but it's a workaround. And of course, what is the best way for us to do so? Well, just looking around what we have inside our homes and offices, come up with this Nintendo Pro Switch controller, or let's say, yeah, you might as well want to use the 30th anniversary of the PS5 DualSense controller or the white one. And yeah, I know it's not perfect, guys, but it's fast, it's quick, it's cheap, and it works. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a bootable Libri Elec image on one USB, install it on another USB. What is the goal of this, guys? The goal is to be able to use Libre and watch movies or TV shows, your local content, whatever you want, and in the same time, still keep the internals. Of course, there is always the option to just use the bootable media and flush everything on the SSD drive. I will leave this up to you. And now let's start. Let's head over to libreelec.tv. There's going to be something called libreelec USB to SD creator because yes, usually on the Android boxes, we do have a micro SD option so put it in the slot and you can boot it from there scroll down and download the USB SD creator then install it it's gonna look like this here we have four options but the first thing we need to do is plug a USB stick to your computer 
and make sure that you have selected it. The first option is to select a version. If you are installing this on a mini PC with an AMD or Intel chip, you can select AMD or Intel. For older AMD, Intel or NVIDIA devices, you can use this here. And those are all available systems like Amlogic and then the Raspberries and etc. The system will automatically give you the image. You need to press download it and it's going to get downloaded. But have in mind, if you're using something like I do, built on Intel Twin Lake N150, I was not able to get past the boot screen. So I need to click on nightly builds. I need to click on the latest 13.0 version, then generic, and then guys go to generic and download the latest nightly file that is actually from this year. All right. And once you do so, you can just go select file. All right. I have it here. Select it, guys. Select your USB and just click right. Have in mind, everything on the flash drive is going to go to a better place into oblivion but hey this is why we're doing this video let's wait for this and then transfer to the mini pc this thing here is the libre elec usd bootable drive so i am just going to plug it up front and wait now the sweet moment guys i'm going to use this usb as well and put it on the back of my drive so now the idea is to start the installation and install the LibreLeg from this USB to this USB, hence also keeping my Windows 11 intact. And for this, I need to change a setting in BIOS to allow the PC to boot from this USB. Let's hook it up to my TV and let's start the show. I've started my mini PC. The moment you see the Amy logo, the boot logo, just press escape, guys, and you're gonna end up here inside the bio we need to navigate from boot scroll down to the boot option one and then select the usb device with uefi this is where i do have the image the bootable library like i have restarted the pc and if everything works correctly we should now boot here in libre elec setup and this is also what has happened now here guys Pay attention, disclaimer, very important. This is it guys, welcome to the Libre Elec installation tool. Directly hit one, install Libre Elec. And guys, again, disclaimer, big disclaimer here. Please select a device. If you leave the first device, which is actually your internal SSD half a terabyte drive, yeah, Windows is gone. Select your USB drive. And by the way, I'm using for this occasion a 16 gigabytes flash drive. You don't need that much, but at least 2G will be okay. Press yes, press yes, and then boom, the installation is going to start. This is rather a quick process. When this thing finishes, guys, remember, you need to remove the installation media and just leave the other USB, the ones that we are using right now to install the Libre Elect on. When the installation is complete, don't forget to just remove the install or bootable media and press reboot. Yes, just did it. I think it goes without saying, but hey, it's very obvious that the other USB stick with the Libre Elect installation should be still in your drive. So just gonna press OK, select for reboot, and now guys, wait for the magic, okay? Don't do anything here right just hold your vet and when you see this don't get too excited because if you're not using the correct build or you don't have support for gpu drivers you might as well just hang up here like i did yesterday that's why i'm using the nightly build but with the nightly build i'm able to start cody version 21 rc omega and now i'm going to show you some tips and tricks to make this thing work because we already know that the removed is not going to support it no hdmi cec remember but hey we still have blue on the box and i have a bunch of old controllers so maybe we can think something and believe it or not guys this is so much better than the standard remote i'm going to show you why and this point of time the keyboard will work and also the mouse will work so i'm just going to click next i'm going to leave this as a default setting all right i can see i'm connected to my wired network i will also want to get ssh and keep the existing password the user for ssh connection is root and the password is libre like as shown here but of course you can change it and now guys i'm going to press next and boom i'm now using cody libre like just enough os for cody guys and i still have my windows so yeah if i want to play games or just do whatever i want to do with my windows i can just remove the usb or even not touch it go inside the bios and just set the boot order to start with my ssd so let me show you around the first thing i want to do is go here 
all right and then in libre elect now why do we need to do so guys remember i told you that i'm gonna find a way on how to control this thing this is bluetooth and what i'm gonna do right now guys i'm going to hold this button here and try to pair the nintendo pro with the vista mini pc okay you can see it's here so i'm gonna click okay i'm gonna pair it all right and it should pretty much work that's what you think right yes and no all right let me tell you why now we can see that i am connected right still not able to do anything why is that if i click on the system menu and i click here on input guys there's going to be something called configure attach controllers and yeah i mean this pretty much looks like my nintendo right now except it's an xbox controller which is going to work out of the box but don't lose your faith because i'm still going to show you how to set it up and when you try to map it with this yeah you can see yeah it's not gonna happen all right let's close this one guys let's go to driver setting from here just double click on the joystick support and you're gonna see there is a thing called joystick driver it's set to linux but now we're gonna be switching this to udev before i try again i will go once more inside bluetooth because sometimes this happens so i need to either reconnect or guys i have a pro tip for you you can just click once connected and just select enable standby and now i'm gonna go back to system input and from here configure a touch control so i'm gonna press the button a we have a we have b yep we have x y let's go with start and back all right and guide and now guys up press this thing here right if you screw this up you need to try again all right sometimes it's like this so when you screw this up just click up again and try all right press up one more time i'm gonna press right and now down and now left and now guys press the left stick press the right stick all right, the shout buttons. Okay, let's do this for the triggers. So now moving the left stick up, all right, right, down, one more time, down, left. Now up, right, down, left. And guys, yep. <laughs> now we have a full working controller with Cody and I'm gonna show you how cool this is. But first things first, I need to show you a very cool skin and then I'm gonna show you the playback. And you're gonna see for yourself that there are quite a lot of benefits while using something like this. I'm already scanning my local database guys and now I wanna show you something cool. I'm gonna click here and I'm going to go inside the interface why well there is a skin i think you should check out click here go to the right oh yeah by the way did i tell you i'm already using the controller it's very convenient by the way imagine doing this with the mouse click on get more guys there's going to be something called AO Intajo. AO Intajo. i'm not sure if i managed to say this correctly but just click install this skin guys and then thank me later i'm going to show you how my libre like code installation is going to look with this skin it's absolutely amazing and of course i'm going to show you the benefits i promise like how easy it is to control the mini pc with this thing because remember nothing else pretty much works at least nothing else i have at home when the new skin is installed you're going to see this menu so here again just using the controller guys select yes press a button and here we are and this thing is so beautiful down below we have information about the movie with the codecs that are used and also with the subtitles and this is guys just to start with there are so many options as you're going to see here and of course i can do all the browsing just with the controller guys and this works really so quick even quicker than my remote and let me show you something that i do believe is really cool okay i'm going to use the shelf view and i'm going to change here to the 3d view and this is absolutely nuts guys you can see how it groups all the movies here on the left and the moment you scroll through all your movies all the others will just go to the left and you can see if it's a blu-ray rip or a dvd and the codex information again this is so nuts so let's say i play the classic alien movie guys right from here just pressing the d-pad arrows i can just go left and right and the seeking just is so nice you can just see this progress bar but then also the phone right what if i just press up right i can just go further and further same with pressing the down arrow all right and what happens when i press the trigger button see here guys 30x forward and the left one is gonna do 32x yeah backward and here this is the favorite part guys how do i control the volume just like this i mean imagine doing this on the remote and it's not so quick i will tell you for sure and again this is not even the best part guys see what happens when i press this button here all right i'm gonna press it once 
now I am in the view mode normal. One more time, it's gonna give me that zoom view. One more time, again, another option. Then I have 120% zoom, 110% zoom, four by three, wide zoom, stretch, and the original size if you wanna do so. And then of course the normal size. Again, this is for volume, all right? This is just fast forwarding back and forth. This thing here will move you around. How do I pose it? Oh, yep, just use the A button, guys. Pose and pose. It's gonna work so nice and so quick. How can I load subtitles? I can press the B button here and then again just go, click subtitle settings, and this is a very good skin, guys. I wanna exit, no problem. Just press B and I'm gonna go back to this beautiful interface. And this thing works so quick, by the way, right? It's not a problem at all. And hence, my advice is, guys, if you want to turn your mini PC into a real HD or home theater PC and don't want to invest money for and pulls HDMI CEC adapter or expensive Bluetooth remote, just use whatever you have at home, right? Anything will pretty much work. This is the Nintendo Pro, but the DualSense also will work. So you have plenty of options. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you like videos like this, don't forget to see my full coverage on the Ace Mini. Thank you so much, guys. Stay safe. VST over and bye.